Hi, I'm Pete from Project Heaven and we're in the engine room again. And today we're going to go through Weber carburetor tuning, specifically on the rolling road uh, and how I go about it and how you would tune a, a Weber carburetor. So first of all, we'll talk a little bit about background of how the Weber carburetor works. So you understand that part first and how then how we generally choose jets to get in the right area. And then how I go about doing it for real on the rolling road and making the adjustments as we go with numerous tests. Okay, so this is a 48 IDF. This is off an Aston Martin V8. Uh, it's quite an easy carburetor to tune, so it's a good one to show you um, all the various components and how you go about setting up on a rolling road. So let's take it apart. I've already took the screws out. Okay. So first of all, first thing is on here we've got uh, we've got to set the um, the fuel needle up on this. So the, what what you need to do is you've got to set the height from this gasket to the top of this float. When you do that, you mustn't set it up by going like this and getting your ruler because you can see that's just sort of bobbing down on the little spring and ball bearing. So you need to actually put it sort of sideways and make sure it's just resting but without loading it up. Then you can measure this. To adjust it, you bend the tab at the back at the back here behind the float. And if you get it wrong, you see, if, it, if it's, if it's uh, too high, um, like this way, when it's resting, the fuel bowl won't fill up properly. And you might have a situation when you're accelerating hard and it suddenly runs out of puff because it's gone lean, it's got no fuel. Um, the other thing is, if you had it too high, then probably it'll overfill and you have f uh, fuel spilling out all over the place and that's quite dangerous. So make sure that's set up correctly. Uh, you can, oh, another no thing to note is you can actually get different sizes of these uh, needle jet and uh, needle valves. Uh, so if you've got a high performance engine, you might want to go for a bigger uh, fuel orifice so you can get more fuel in quickly. And you may also want to increase your fuel pressure slightly. Uh, for example, on uh, my car, I've raised it from three PSI to five and it also has a bigger jet in it. Right, so the rest of the carburetor. Accelerator jets out. So on the side of the carburetor there, you've got the accelerator jet. So the way you check if this is right or not is you'd say be going on the rollers, going along at a constant speed, and then stamp the accelerator. And if you notice that the car suddenly hesitates, like it feels like it's, it's cutting out, then that probably means it's running lean. Of course, you'd, most likely you'd have an AFR gauge on there, so you'd know what your fuel mix is doing exactly. Um, but it does all happen quite quickly. So if you're having a situation like that, where it sort of feels like it's cutting, then probably this is too small. So you need a bigger orifice on this. Uh, if you, the other way around, if you're, if you're stamping down and it sort of bogs down and doesn't really do very much, then it might be too rich. But of course, a fuel mixture, uh, an AFR gauge will show you that and you'll be able to choose the right thing. Uh, so next. Next, we've got the uh, main jet assemblies, okay? There's two of these, there's two accelerator jets as well, of course, because this is a twin choke carburetor. So here we've got uh, the, well, the jet holder, so you can pull that off. And then inside there, we've got the emulsion tube in the middle, which mixes the fuel and air, because an emulsion is a mixture of two things that don't really like to mix. So you've got the air and fuel mixing within this. And then you've got, at one end, you've got the main fuel jet and the other end, you've got the air jet. So the main fuel jet, if you increase this or decrease it, it'll affect the fueling throughout the whole rev range when your foot is flat on the accelerator. This, this, is, this circuit is just for when you've got your foot flat down, basically. So when you're for a racing car, this is the one you're really interested in. Uh, the air jet, however, only really affects the fuel mix towards the top end, but it, does, or it affects it more towards the top end, shall I say, of the RPM. So if you've got an uneven fuel mixture curve, you might want to adjust this to help make the, uh, the fuel mixture more level on the graph there. And you'll see examples of this later on. The emulsion tube, uh, choosing emulsion tubes, basically is, it's all mainly to do with uh, cylinder capacity. So if you have a very large cylinder capacity, you'll want a larger emulsion tube so that it has a reservoir, a good reservoir of fuel and air mix ready to go into the engine. Okay, so this is the idle jet, well, idle jet holder and idle jet. 
So at the end of the idle jet is the fuel orifice, and at the sides here is where the air goes in. This is mixing fuel and air uh, for your idle circuit. Interestingly, on this carburetor, the fuel orifice is at the end and the air uh, orifice is on the side. On an IDA carburetor, you only have a fuel orifice in the actual jet. There's no other holes in that. And you actually have to change the jet holder because the jet holder is what you use to tune the um, air, how much air is going in. Anyway, the purpose of the idle uh, mixer jet is to mi uh, give you an idle, uh, a mixture of fuel for idle and part throttle conditions. So there's a, a separate circuit within the carburetor that uses this to feed show you here, the idle mixture screw and the progression holes. So if you're idling, um, you, adjust, you adjust the fuel mix that's been produced by this jet by adjusting this screw to get it exactly right for idle. But then when you come off idle and you're on part throttle, say you, you're cruising along at very small throttle openings, that, that jet alone is what dictates the fuel mixture. So if you've got a, a lean mixture or a weak mixture, when you've just got a slight throttle opening, you need to adjust that jet accordingly. So that would be a, either a bigger fuel orifice or a smaller um, air orifice on that, on that jet. A good, a good sort of like um, quick way to choose if you haven't got a rolling road would be you want to aim for a jet that gives you an idle when you've only got this screw, idle screw, turned out about two turns or one and a half turns from its base setting, from being screwed all the way in. If you're winding this thing out like eight, eight turns, then most likely you need a larger idle mixture jet. And obviously if you're only, if you're only cracking it a fraction, uh, then you might need a smaller one, you see? So that's the idle circuit, and that's how I'd go about tuning that. Right, the last thing to really talk about is the, uh, Main Venturis. So the main Venturi is a restriction in there that helps to pull the fuel air mixture into the carburetor and cause atomization and give you a good, a good fuel mix to burn. But it's a restriction. So on a racing car, you want to try and use the largest you possibly can, like this uh, 41 millimeter uh, Venturi, which is actually fitted to my car. Um, so that you're not causing a restriction, you're getting max power. But there is a downside. If you use a large Venturi at slow air speeds, you're going to get a poor mix. And probably on startup, you have quite a bit of trouble starting the car. Um, anything below sort of, well, on my mine, for example, below 3000 RPM is pretty poor. You know, it wouldn't be any good for driving around town. So fine for maximum horsepower, but not good for general usability. So on a road car, you'd use a much smaller Venturi, which gives you a good mix. But then obviously it's a restriction at higher RPM. On my car, for example, I actually uh, have a 48 IDA on mine. I put this quite rather large 41 mil Venturi in it and then kept going up uh, fuel mixture jet sizes until I was pretty much maxed out. I think it's something like a 2.6 mil fuel jet. Um, and then I thought, okay, I'll try using a smaller Venturi and, and see how, that, how much effect it has. It actually had a huge effect. It was sort of, I lost me about 15 horsepower. So it's well worth going as max as you possibly can put up with if, you, if you're out and out racing. Okay, so the only other thing to talk about is the other types of Webers. So another type of Weber here, this is like off of a, off of a, no, a production car. It's a 40, what is it? A 40 DFAV, yeah. So uh, used on, old Essex engines, I think. The, you can still tune this, but the only downside is, uh, being for like a production car, you've actually got to dismantle the, the top off rather than, because actually you can change the jets on this. You can't change the Venturis without taking the lid off, but you can change the main jets and the idle jets. This, unfortunately, you've got to take the whole top off, dunk your screwdriver into the fuel bowl and, and fish out the um, main jets. Um, but yeah, still, still perfectly tunable. So they're all sort of, all the Weber carbs are kind of basically similar in principle. So you can tune any of them, but some of them are trickier than others. Uh, the other thing I was just going to mention is that uh, for checking your 
jet sizes, you could use one of these, which is a little jet gauge, because um, maybe if you don't want to be buying jets, you could, and you've got a load of old jets, you could actually um, drill them out and check their sizes with these. I can't drill them with these, but you can check the sizes after you've drilled them. So that might be a, like a cheaper way of uh, tuning if you can't afford to buy a lot of jets. Okay, so now we'll uh, finish up by showing you some real world results on the rolling road. I'll show you some test results that I've got from a car I've been tuning uh, and we'll run it up a couple more times just to do a couple more final adjustments. <laughs> Okay, so we've just completed a series of power runs uh, and we've done a, a whole load of tuning on the car on the Roaring Road. I'm just gonna go through uh, each power run I've done and what corrections and changes I made to the carburetors and the setup. And you can see exactly how uh, it works, basically. So, first, first test, I shoved the carburetor straight on and we had uh, 220 mains uh, for the main fuel jets and 200 air. So that gave us a pretty uh, pretty rough result. So let me see here. We've got it's pretty much maxed out lean. The machine can't read any leaner than this. this so this line here is our fuel mixture. And uh, this line here, this orange one, is the horsepower, and this one is the torque. And it's a horrible curve. It's terrible. Uh, it's because it's running dreadfully lean. So, you know, basically, right, Scrap that test, put some richer jets in, go to the next one. My second test, this one I have gone, I've kept the main jet the same size at 220 and I've reduced the air jet to 150 to see how that made it behave. And we have started to get a bit more of a fuel mixture that can actually be read by the machine. So it's at least it's within that sort of a range. Um, we've got a fuel mix of one, Lambda 1.3. So very lean. The richest it gets is about 1.14. So, uh, but it's starting to behave a bit better. The horsepower curve looks a bit more normal. The torque curve looks a bit more normal. We've gone from 111 horsepower to 145 horsepower. Um, so let's go to the next test. Okay, so the next test, I went up on a main size. So the main fuel jet is now 260. So that's like 2.6 mil. Uh, my air jet is 150 still. Uh, and you can see this has got a lot better now. Our fuel mixture is uh, hovering around Lambda 1. So Lambda 1 is like a stoichiometric mixture. It's what you'd want to have your idle at. But when you're under full load, full throttle, we need to be aiming for like 0.85 Lambda. That's well, 0.8, 0.85, that sort of thing. So the uh, lower the Lambda number, the richer, <coughs> and the higher the Lambda number, the leaner. So above one is absolutely unacceptable, basically. So, yeah, so better, but not perfect. Uh, we've got a horsepower now of 170. So we've gone up at another, uh, what's that, about uh, 35 horsepower. So now I've got the big guns out and I've gone to a 2.9 mil jet. That is the biggest um, jet you can buy. Well, it's a bit of a hard to see screen, but that's the biggest um, one you can get, basically, for an IDA. Uh, and the air jet is a 150. Now, we're having to use a huge jet here because I've used a 42 mil Venturi. If I went down a Venturi size or more, then it would be much easier to tune. And I'll show an example of that in a second. So anyway, we're a 290 main, 150 air. We've got a fuel mixture of 
0.93, so it's closer, and we've got uh, maximum horsepower. Again, it's, it's about 180 horsepower. So, so then the next thing, okay, I go for a 190 and a 100 air jet. Now, in this instance, we've now gone too far. So, although we've made um, better horsepower, we're nearly 200 horsepower now, but it's slightly too rich. It's not, lambda 0 0.78, uh, 76, that sort of thing. So now we've got to go back a step to get it where we need to be. Okay, so this is the, this is the uh, final test. So now we've got um, a very nice flat fuel mixture. It's really quite good. And we've got lovely horsepower and torque curves. And we've got a peak power of 219 horsepower at 5,500 RPM. And the fuel mixture is uh, between 0 0.83, 0.86. It's really good. It's just about spot on, actually. Yeah, really, really pleased with that. So we've got a great fuel mixture, good power curves, good power. Um, but we've like maxed out our jet sizes, basically. So then I thought, well, okay, let's, let's experiment. Let's go for a smaller choke. Um, so I then put in a 37 mil choke and yeah, it allowed me to use a, um, what was the main size? Uh, I think it was about, I think it was something like a 220 main and it was a 150 air jet and the fuel mixture was controllable. I mean, you know, Lambda 0 0.8589, um, but we lost power. So we've got less, less torque and less power. We're down by about 10 horsepower. So I've put the bigger ones back in because it is just a racing car. It's not going to be used on the road. It was much easier to start with these and it was much better lower down, but I'm not going to be hanging around down there. So that, that's, uh, that's what I decided upon. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. I think the next thing to do now is to take it on track and see how it behaves. Uh, I may, I may, most likely I'll go down a Venturi size, probably something like a uh, 40 or a 39. Um, but for now, we'll give it a test. Uh, you might want to check out one of the videos. We did a video on EFI tuning and how you um, fuel map an entire car. Um, yeah, and subscribe. Cheers. <laughs>